being an exotic dancer was really a dream job for me. I never, I never would have believed that I would get paid to dance. Um, that was, that was just so far outside of the realm of possibility. Dancing in and of itself seemed pretty impossible. Getting paid for it was kind of a dream come true, really. Like having any kind of an artistic job where you can actually get paid a living wage is, is kind of a rare thing and kind of a valuable thing too. Granted, there are some downsides to it, and one of the big ones is the social stigma that comes with the job. It doesn't matter what you've done in your life, what you've accomplished, what you're capable of. The moment you get that job, there's a big fat label slapped on you and, well, all your other achievements just don't seem to matter all that much. I remember when I worked on the ambulance for a year, people would tell me that I was doing good and amazing work. Actually, even when I worked in the nursing home, people would tell me I was doing good and amazing work and it takes a special kind of person to do what you do. Um, I got that a lot when I was working in the group home for the mentally disabled. Oh, it takes a special kind of person to do the work you do and you're helping to save people's lives when I was working on the ambulance and of course then I got the job in the strip club and suddenly everybody was telling me that I was wasting my life and that I was more or less useless. There were of course the old men who would come and try to get me to stay with them and live with them and be their personal sex servant thing. And that was mostly because, I mean, what else was I going to do with myself? I mean, I was worthless, right? I've been told so many times by my customers that I'm useless, that I'm worthless, that I'm wasting my life. Yeah, 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 whatever. It happens. It's part of the job. People assume that you're useless. Then again, if you work at a, a burger joint and you're flipping the burgers, people are going to assume you're useless. If you're working as a janitor and... You know, maybe you love being a janitor. If you're working stocking shelves and maybe you actually enjoy your job stocking shelves or maybe you just got the job and you're young and you're climbing up the corporate ladder. It doesn't matter. People are still going to treat you like you're useless. Anything, it seems to be primarily physical things. Oh dear. I don't know if you can hear that. I put my son down for bed and he's not too happy about it. <laughs> he's okay. He's just not happy. Um, but, uh, yeah, like any any kind of, it seems to be like mostly physical jobs. Like if you're sitting at a desk, actually even if you're sitting at a desk, anything low enough in the pecking order, it's like, oh, well, you know, you must be worthless. It could be your dream job. In fact, in my case, it was my dream job. And everybody was like, oh, well, you're worthless. You're wasting your life. What are you doing with yourself? I don't know. I'm living and I'm enjoying my life and I'm trying to move on to the next stage of life. And... I'm loving the process. I don't see really what's wrong here. You know, and the next stage of life was, of course, finding a partner, getting married, settling down, having kids. Once we had the kids, suddenly it was like, well, it's time to, it's time to give up my career so that I can stay at home and be a good mother. And I did that. I, I really, if you take out, if you take out the job title, you might notice that I've done all the things you're supposed to do. Like if you had a checklist and just check them off one by one, I did all that. I found a career. I stayed with my career and I advanced in my career. I improved my skills. And by the time I retired, I was very, I was very accomplished in my career. I traveled around the country. I saw, you know, a, a sizable chunk of the world. I, I met lots of new and interesting people. I, I was able to maintain very good health in my career. I, I did everything I wanted to do. And then I found a wonderful man, settled down, had kids. I did the things in life that I thought were important. Unfortunately, I did it all under the shadow of a rather significant amount of stigma. And I thought that this was a very acceptable exchange. Nothing is perfect in this world. Everything comes with a cost. And for me, that cost was merely social stigma. I didn't get involved in the drugs that sometimes come with my job. I didn't get like heavily involved in the alcohol that frequently comes with my job. I didn't sleep around with lots and lots of men and end up with unwanted pregnancies or strange STDs. I didn't do all the crazy stuff that strippers are known for doing, supposedly, supposedly that we do. I mean, there are some dancers that I've met who were really, I mean, there are stereotypes for a reason. 
And there's stigma for a reason too. And this is something I think a lot of people don't understand. There's all sorts of things these days that I see people getting all up in arms about. Like we need to, we need to remove the stigma from this, you know, we need to remove the stigma from mental illness. We need to remove the stigma from abortion. We need to remove the stigma from, I mean, you name it, you name it. And sometimes people who say that, often, often, most of the time, I think people who say this are very well-meaning. I think they fail to realize that the stigma is there for a reason in the first place. And maybe it's good reasons and maybe it's bad reasons, but there are definitely reasons that these stigmas exist. And there's definitely a reason that there's a stigma to my job. I just thought it was worth the sacrifice of carrying that stigma to have the job itself. <laughs> and it really was for me. I know that there are many people that it has not been a beneficial job for. It's not a beneficial life choice for many people, but I wasn't many people. I was me. I was in a terrible situation and I needed something to get me out. And I found something that got me out of my terrible situation. And enriched my life, actually, quite a bit. If there's stigma that comes with that, well, too bad. So now, now I'm a housewife and I'm retired and I'm living a quiet little life and I'm introducing my small children to other parents who are respectable, upstanding members of the community. Smart people, nice people, good people. Like, people that you, people that I feel comfortable with. Like, they're just, they're very good people that I've met. And some of them know what I've done in my past. The ones that I'm pretty close to, that I've known for a while, they know. Um, many of them don't. Most of them don't actually know about my history. Um, I've met lots of other parents that my kids are going to school with, parents that my kids are playing with. Um, they don't, they don't know what I've done in my past. I don't expect people to understand and maybe I'm, maybe I'm underestimating them. It's entirely possible I'm underestimating them. And if I am, and I later find that out, I apologize if they're in any way offended, but it's too much of a risk because stigma rubs off onto other people and I don't want my children to ever be burdened with my decisions even if they were good decisions and I do firmly believe they were good decisions on my part um, I've tried to I've tried to explain these choices to people. I've tried to explain these choices to family members. Like, you know, my parents still don't have any idea why I became an exotic dancer. It's just, it's a mystery to them. And we've all kind of accepted the fact that they're never going to get it. And that's okay. Um, people, people don't, they don't understand. And when I try to explain it, and I spend a lot of time trying to explain it. I spend a lot of time on this channel trying to explain it. All the reasons that I did what I did. That's a cat. Hold on. And there he is in the background. All the reasons that I did what I did. Um, and when I try to explain that to people, there are so many people who just don't get it. It's like, I can say, and this is kind of, I think, what I was touching on with the, the Daddy Issues video. It's like, I can say, these are the reasons that I did this. And these are the reasons that I think it was a good thing. And I can list reasons for hours. I could sit here talking at you guys for hours. I'm not going to do that to you, but... I could talk for hours about all of the benefits that I've had in my life from my choice to become a dancer and so many things that have sprung off from that decision and so many roads that I've ended up walking on because of that decision, so many opportunities I've had because of that decision. That's the reason I make these videos in some ways. I mean, it, it was a life-changing decision and it helped me so much. And I can talk about all that. And I think what a lot of people hear is, I have all these excuses for why I'm a raging slut who just can't help but spreading her legs for every man who thinks he might want to see it. Like, it's, it's amazing to me. Like, I understand that some people you just can't talk to. But it's funny to me because I, I want to... 
I want to share my journey with people. It's been such a strange one. You don't go somewhere dark and filled with ill repute and make something beautiful there. That just doesn't happen. And that's the thing that mystifies me about my life. I look at it and it's like, I did everything wrong and it came out well. And I don't get it. And I don't know if I'll ever get it. You know? But the stigma that comes with it is definitely not a positive aspect of it. I understand why it exists and I would not tell anybody not to continue thinking the way they've always thought with their various stigmas for things like... I mean, if you walk into a strip club, you don't just leave your wallet on the table with the dancer and go to the bathroom because you know there's a decent chance you're going to come back and it's going to be stolen. I've worked in many strip clubs where that's not going to happen, but I've also heard stories about girls who steal all sorts of things. I remember one place I worked at, we heard a story about a rival club in town. These two girls took a guy home, and one of them was having sex with him. I guess they were at a hotel room. One of them was having sex with the guy, and the other one stole his pants with his wallet inside. <laughs> and made off with it. It's like... That's, that's, about, that's about as bad as you can get. Like, first of all, they're stupid criminals. They're not even smart criminals. And second of all, like... Oh, yep. That was, that was people I worked with. Like, that was people in my job. It wasn't the people I worked with in my club. It was people that I worked with in this profession. And unfortunately, that's what people think about when they think of my profession. <laughs> and it's horrible. Because I've known, I've known so many intelligent, capable, hardworking, not crazy women. I mean, most of us are, I'll, I'll say, most of us are messed up in some way. I was messed up. I'll admit it. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I knew, I knew way too many smart dancers. Um, I knew one girl who got her doctorate in statistics while she was dancing. And she didn't retire the moment she got the doctorate. She kept on going to work and she kept on dancing. And, you know, it happens. I knew another girl who was an accountant. Accountant by day, stripper by night. You've got your perfect combo there. You've got the smart, you've got the sexy. All, all the wonderful flavors. <laughs> it's all right there in one package. Um, there are intelligent strippers. They exist. I knew strippers who were ballerinas. I knew strippers who were dance instructors. You know... We're kind of an odd batch. We're a hodgepodge of all sorts of different things. Frequently the dregs of society. I was a dreg of society. One of the things that it just kind of spit out and I had nowhere to go and I ended up there. Which is another reason that I was perhaps comfortable with acquiring the, stri the stigma of being a stripper. Like, really, what did I have to lose? What, what, kind of, what kind of a loss would it be if people thought that I was a slut on top of everything else people thought I was? Worthless, you know, stupid, kind of strange. Okay, and a slut on top of that. Let's just make it a complete picture. <laughs> of all the things that society would like to reject. And the truth is, I lived my life, and I think I've lived it well so far. If I had to die tomorrow, I wouldn't have many regrets. That's a good way to see the world. If you can look at the world around you and say, if I had to die right now in this minute, doing exactly what I'm doing, would I regret it? It's good sometimes to have moments in your life where you can look at it and say, well, you know, so far, so far I think I've played a good game. But yeah, that's the stigma that comes with the job. Um, when I first, when I first tried to get a job as a dancer, and some of you heard this story already, um, the man who owned the club that I was applying for a job at had a son who had gone to high school with me. Actually, he'd gone to elementary school with me, middle school, and high school with me. <laughs> it was a small town, and so he called me back into his office right before I was supposed to go on stage, and I was already dressed up in all my clothes, and I was you know, ready to go on stage, and he tried very hard to convince me not to proceed with the job. He asked me if I was having money trouble, if that's why I was doing it. He asked me if maybe I had a boyfriend who was pressuring me into doing it. He tried so hard to convince me not to do that job, 
And it was so funny because at one point he was like, you know, people are going to start, they're going to start treating you differently once you get the job. And it's like, I mean, what did I have to lose at that point? Nothing. I mean, I hated my life and I desperately needed something to change it and something to improve it. And I was willing to try anything. And that ended up being the thing that changed my life. But it was so funny because I was I was seriously afraid he was going to come up with some excuse just not to hire me, not to take me on to the job. And I remember sitting there telling him, like, as nonchalantly as I could fake it, oh, you know, I do what I want. And I meant it. I do what I want. But uh, I was very afraid that they were going to stop me somehow from getting that job because I felt like that's what I needed to do in life. Odd thing to feel like you need to do. Like most people, you know, they get a calling to be, I mean, an optometrist. <laughs> they get a calling to be, you know, a heart surgeon. They get a calling to be a nurse. They get a calling to do some sort of good and honorable work. Uh, but uh, this particular person sitting in front of you got a calling to be an exotic dancer. The world is strange, I guess. I'll talk to you guys later. There's some cats behind me. There's one right there.